Namaste, angels. I'm recording another love reading for the week of uh, today, July 16th through next Saturday, July 22nd. And today, July 16th is the feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Um, it is also a second celebration of the feast day that was for Mary last week. Our Lady of Atati is in um, South America, particularly Chile, uh, which is having a severe, a severe snowstorm right now, uncharacteristically, although it is winter in South America. They don't typically have this kind of snow. They are um, right now. It is there where they often celebrate Our Lady of Itati again today. Um, and this week is very special, at least to me, because it's bookend by these two holidays. Today, the 16th, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and Saturday, the day on which this reading ends, um, or the last day of it, the day on which it, the day which it goes through, is the celebration of Mary Magdalene. So it's, you know, we're closed in by love, the love of Jesus's mother and the love of his woman um, with us in the middle. And our cards before showed that, and I'm sure our cards are gonna show that again. We might have a lot of the same ones and there may be instances where I tell you guys some of what showed up before. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll summarize that for you guys too. So what else might it might affect um, this week? I'm not gonna go into detail, of course. I do that on the uh, general reading and I did that on the general reading, but at the end of the week, so the 22nd is the feast day of, our, of um, Mary Magdalene. The 23rd is the new moon. And we may start feeling that energy, you know, Thursday the 20th, Friday the 21st. Saturday the 22nd. So I got to mention that one. And on the heels of that, the very next day is the 24th. It's the, the start of the new Hebrew month, the month of Av, which means father, Ava or Abba, um, A-V, A-B. All of these are um, uh, ways to spell father or sometimes it's considered bearer in um, Hebrew. So that's a very special day. And it's sort of combined with this month because there's like a three week period uh, where the months, you know, sort of cross from Tammuz to Av, where we go from mourning to redemption and, you know, then celebrating life and celebrating our blessings and soulmate day and all this kind of stuff uh, that happens in Av. So we'll, we'll start feeling that perhaps into this week. And then there was also astrology. Let's see, so uh, Venus is in Gemini still. Mercury is in Leo. Mars enters Leo this week though, on the 20th. The sun enters Leo also, so there'll be some um, Leo birthdays. We're leaving Cantor. Um, this is the last week to celebrate some Cantor birthdays. So happy birthday to you guys um, that fall into this week. And um, like I said, the 23rd is the new moon. The 25th, Mercury enters Leo. Um, and that's the following week. So that's the stuff that we may feel. What else? We also still have, I think like three planets um, either in full on retrograde, retrograde or you know approaching retrograde, they're in that shadow. Uh, and that would be Uranus, Pluto, and Saturn off the top of my head and um some of you are also feeling the effects of black moon lilith in sagittarius she entered sagittarius on february 14th venus so whereas some of us were used to spending um used to spending um the Valentine's Day, like quote unquote holiday with Bay, we might not have this year, or maybe we were not used to it and we did this year, things were different because of that energy. Um, last year was pretty, pretty bad. She was in Scorpio and there were Scorpio divine masculine up and moving out of the apartments that they shared with the divine feminine and you know breaking up with them, leaving in the middle of the night, all kinds of stuff. Um, going on. So I haven't heard anything like that with the Sagittarius, but I have heard of just, you know, some turmoil um, that was otherwise unexpected. So we have that. She will be there until um, um, when is she leaving? I think it's October. 
that she's in Sagittarius until then. But anyway, <laughs> it's a while and it's, it certainly covers this week. And um, Chiron, the wounded healer, retrograde in Pisces, which is considered a healer. Now Chiron was a healer too. Um, obviously not the comet, um, yeah, <laughs> but the being, mythical, mythological being at least, uh, Chiron, he was also a healer and he's called the wounded healer because he was able to heal everybody but himself. Um, and so, you know, maybe this Piscean energy will help him and people like him. These are the things that we have to keep in mind. And speaking of healing the, and why um, the other video had that weird sound over it. There's Raphael, by the way, too, speaking of healing. He just passed by, said, what's up? Um, I have no idea what that sound was <laughs> at all. Anybody that thinks that I heard a sound and continued to record through it on purpose can go ahead and leave now. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, that I'm sitting here doing this for the gram and I got nothing else to do. Yeah, you can go ahead and leave now. Thanks for having, having joined us. Um, it was the dark, obviously. They're very, very mad with me. They have reason to be very, very angry with me. Well, today, and one of the things I had to mention to you guys, um, you know, I was just full of love. I was at Tavern on the Green earlier, and there was a live singer there, and one of the songs that she sang, one of the songs she performed was um, It's a Wonderful, What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. So that had put me into a nice mood, too. And um, I came, and I, I did the love reading, and I was feeling good, and it was really romantic um and also informative okay so let me sum this is the good time to segue into that and sum it up for you guys the first spread was basically telling the feminine that the masculine had karmic um some karmic issues going on he's very very uh attractive right now <laughs> he has suitors people after him they're like a, he got the dating queen card um, for himself and there were like three different arms extended out to him outreach to him hoping that he would take their flowers out of their hand and um, the message from the other cards and the surrounding what he felt about the feminine what he felt about the union as a whole which was that he wanted to communicate um, all indicated that yes I may have some karmic situations going on some things that I have to resolve but I want you feminine to keep in mind that like this is not where I want to be um, true Jim was here the true relationship is here the overall uh, was true love the outcome was karma you know and that's what was going on karmic completion so he just wanted to reassure us that he's resolving some issues and then that showed up in the next spread too um, the feminine the overall energy first of all was the queen of pentacles queen of earth in reverse and there was a lot of indication that all of us need to uh, get out into the earth and get grounded and work on our root chakras all of these things um, but for the feminine in addition to that overall energy of the queen of pentacles in reverse which was an indication for some of um being overly concerned with material things for some it's like being disappointed like with your life, with your situation, with your circumstance, and maybe even your home. I attributed a lot of that to the masculine because he was crowned by the four of wands. And then the next card, um, I don't remember what was surrounding him, but it indicated to me that he wasn't happy in his home and they, you know, or, or in his house. But that home, you know, is where the heart is. He wanted to be somewhere else. Um, and the cards that showed up there were indicative of cutting away uh, and or wanting to cut away a, another energy in some cases romantic because also associated with that I I pulled a release your ex uh, card but in some cases their situation was with people's parents at the heart of the matter I had coincidentally quote unquote coincidentally uh, explained the story of the hermit in my lover's path tarot deck it's this uh, guy Abelard who was like a monk a priest right and he fell in love with this woman named Eloise. And so he basically left the priesthood. And, um, you know, it, he was in reverse too. And so that indicated a need for all of us, it was the heart of the matter, so it was the feminine and the masculine to like follow our dreams, follow our hearts, and many, many other cards to that effect came up. Uh, certainly cards reflective of the love, not only true gem, uh, but soulmate, 
uh, sacred union, sacred marriage. Um, it was just, it was a really good reading. Um, so if you were able to hear it, and if I'm able to fix it, because I didn't even listen to it, I just sat down and decided to start to do another one. So after I do this one, I'll go back and listen to that one. And if it's something that's not on the originals, then we'll have two. You know, if not, this will be the new reading. But some of us definitely experiencing that other energy and a lot of the cards showing up again. So what's the other reason why the um, darkest pissed at me and would do that? Well, I talked about the healings that I've been doing for people in the general reading and I'm going to talk about it again here because I know they're so angry. It's not like me. It's completely unlike me to, you know, try to sell anybody anything. In fact, when people want my readings, they have to ask me like, how do I get a reading? What do I have to do? I mean, they're asking me all the time, you know, how do I arrange it? Um, because I'm not, I'm not that type, you know, where I'm, I'm here selling something. I'm here for a totally different purpose, which is why I said anybody that thinks I'm sitting here doing this for the gram can go. You know, they can unsubscribe and leave and whatever else. And, you know, nice meeting you. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very uncharacteristic, but I, I can't help myself because the response, first of all, to the fact that I was doing them and had, like, made them public, made the, made the knowledge that I was doing them public, was so tremendous and then the results even outweighed that by the grace of God he is so good he told me specifically step by step what I have to do in order to perform these healings and how to and how to do it um, and like what to type up in order to explain it to other people all of that and those who have ordered them and it's particularly the divine light cleanse and to me that one's like an all-encompassing you know you get a little bit of, of each um, of the three healing modalities that I offer you get a little bit of each in that one and the angels are very much a part of it describing to me um, not only what I need to do but what I need to tell the, the client in order to maintain the healing but we had um, one woman who had been completely unable to sleep and so, so well, her anxiety was like really, really high and really, really bad. She said for 15 hours a day, I did the cleanse and she was able to release that anxiety. She's enjoying herself, traveling um, the country right now, the United States, I think on, on her way to her second um, vacation this week, Colorado or something like that. Um, another who rarely sleeps, you know, longer than three, four hours, slept for 10 hours and the day, the day that I did it and the day following, got contact, received contact from her divine masculine, letting her, telling her that he wanted to make love to her, a very, very romantic, all kinds of um, reassurance and, and, and comfort from him, um, support from him and love from him that had previously been blocked. Um, yesterday, I posted one on my Facebook, a woman for whom I read who, you know, that night and the next day she had these really vivid, lucid, prophetic dreams and was able to see like her past life with her divine masculine and know what they went through and know what they have to do going forward in order to make it. And in the morning <laughs> prior to that, I had talked to another one who had had, um, similarly, she had had very prophetic, clear, vivid dreams that she was uh, in this home on 111 Trinity Street or something like that and was very, very happy and was energized uh, uncharacteristically because she's normally tired all the time, but she woke up feeling like, you know, going to work out and it was only six o'clock AM her time. She's in California. I'm in here in New York and she was contacting me already like bright eyed and bushy tail. Um, another woman who was physically unable to make it to her yoga class. She had all kinds of, um, you know, quote unquote, female problems, hormonal issues, fertility problems. I saw all of this. I saw exactly what vitamins she was in, which she was deficient. I, I saw the feminine problems. The angels told me what I needed to uh, translate to her to do. They told me that they were also going to support her to increase her energy. The next day, her energy was increased. She's not missing any more yoga classes or anything else that she had previously enjoyed doing, that she was beginning to feel like a hermit and a shut-in, that she couldn't participate in anything. All of that is over. Her family was so overwhelmed by the results that her sister ordered two of the healings um, as well. So... I can't keep this a secret. I can't keep it in. I'm overjoyed. I'm absolutely humbled and honored that, you know, God has chosen me to be able to do this. 
and, and I, I can't wait to do it some more. So the doc is really, really angry about that. And then after I recorded our wonderful video earlier, I had a conversation with a gentleman. I don't even know where he was. It was on, um, you know, he contacted me on Facebook. Um, a Muslim gentleman, and he's asking me, you know, about like why um, some domination in the Quran like is a haram, and I'm able to answer this. A haram means like it's it's prohibited. Um, I'm able to answer. He asked me about um, my feelings on um, reincarnation with regard to the Quran, and I was able to tell him exactly where in the Quran it says actually reincarnation is, you know not something in which Muslims believe, it, you know, it's a finite, you, you die and you wait and your soul waits until you are resurrected. You know, there's only one time. Um, and most monolithic um, religions are like that because the idea is that, um, you know, who's, who's, you know, judging you all these times and on what lifetime, which one? you know, if you have all these lives. So they just believe in this, it's just one, it's just finite. Um, but I, you know, I was able to do that. I can, and I can turn around after I speak to somebody about Islam and, and you know, <laughs> salam alaikum, wish them a, a, a well day. Um, then I can turn around and talk about Rosh Kodesh and, and Judaism. They're really pissed about this. So um, that's my deal, that's my spiel. And with that, I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's get to our new reading. So I'm doing the dice again too. And I'm beginning with Dirty Movie. Buy Shoes. And no. So I'm, yeah, I'm just not gonna let them get us down. I do have to say it was I went straight to the reading and it was like 48 minutes long. So I talked about something and I'm, you know, for that, I'm sorry that you guys missed whatever I said and that I, and that I missed whatever I said, um, you know, but God is going to work this out. We're going to get the message that we need. Spend money. This came up in the original reading too. It's 50, 50. So, you know, take it or leave it can go either way. Don't trouble yourself too much if on something that had a yes or no decision. Don't worry about it. And also stay in bed. Okay. So dark male was also very, very prominent. The universe saying that he was showing up this week. He also turned up in the feminine uh, advice. So dark male, very, very impactful upon the union. It may be the masculine. It may be the feminine, um, you know, themselves. That's impactful upon the union this week but dark male. And so he's returned and opening to new love. Dark male, long distance. And now opposite dark male, this can be um, somebody that is physically, you know, far away that maybe has to contact you, you know, from long distance. Um, it can also mean something about separation. And it can also mean they're telling me, you know, something about going the distance um, with the dark male, like, you know, long time to come, long distance. Control in reverse. So there's no reversals actually in this deck, but I like seeing that. Long distance back and money. So, so far, this is a different reading, long distance. I'll go one more. There's the communication, though. They can't keep this away. We had communication pop up like three times in the other reading. So it's, it's very much a thing. And it's also in the general. Um, the masculine one is communicate. He came through with the Mercury card um, that he had like something on his chest that he wanted to unload. That was the card he chose for himself in the spread that I did, the cross spread that I did prior to the general. Long distance back. I'm going to cut. was that other one it's the dark male in reverse now and this one so she wasn't here before um she didn't show up at all in the other reading but now you know it's sunday night we're getting nearer and nearer to tomorrow the 17th which i told you is a celebration of lilith um 
and that a Lilith energy already might be surrounding us with black moon Lilith in Sagittarius. Um, so that can be what this is about, possibly. I don't know why I just opened again, but I did. And it's the communication. So maybe I can get rid of Lilith. Yeah. Okay. The overall energy is union. Feminine with regard to herself in, as it relates to the union this week. Long distance. She might be thinking about somebody that's far off. Um, maybe with regard to the communication, deciding whether or not to reach out. Um, she can be thinking about separation. And the fact that she hasn't heard from somebody again for a while, the Divine Masculine in particular. And also just thinking about whether or not she wants to reach out. That's what's coming to me now whether she wants to be the one to initiate the communication and the contact. Um, the masculine with regard to the feminine as it relates to the union this week, true love. Just this card showed up. It was in this position in the original reading. It was the overall. So here it is. Um, and what the one, what the masculine had chosen for the feminine in the other reading, I believe was destiny. Like she was his destiny. True love. The masking with relation to himself, um, you know, where the union is regarded this week. Open relationship. This has been coming through uh, that he desires a relationship in the open. And I think that there's some of that still there, but that that's not the primary reason this card is showing here. Um, I think this is a replacement for the one that was in this place earlier where dating queen, like he's, you know, he's out there, um, even without you, he's out there right now. And I, it's, I'm feeling that like, he's saying like, it has like for, for some of them, it has to be this way right now. Um, uh, let's see what he says with regard to the union. The union is his destiny. So he's still on track. He's saying he's got some things to work out. It is similar to the card that was here earlier. That one was, um, yeah, it was dating queen. And it was like he had to work out some karmic issues. So this is a, the same type of energy. Overall, young female, the redhead, um, is who is on his mind. And this may be an actual younger person um, or a youthful person as well young at heart and the outcome boom <laughs> see what happens when the dog tries to stop you they can't can't stop won't stop i keep telling them i'm from harlem sorry <laughs> we all have that diddy can't stop won't stop so now with an overall energy of union a divine masculine that feels about us that we are his true love and the outcome being twin flame and the divine masculine himself feeling that the union is his destiny. We're, we're guided to not be too worried about whatever this is that's happening here. Okay. Allow this to work itself through, whether it's a family issue, whether it is an issue with another romantic interest or former romantic interest or friend that's blocking you or whatever the case may be, allow him to work through whatever this situation is. What would the masculine have us to do a surrender toward uh, this union this week and all this that's going on here? Gifts. Now gifts came up in the other reading too. And I felt that it was like, not only might somebody be getting gifts this week because it's their birthday, either a cancer, um, you know, or before it's too late or a Leo, but that also, there was somebody, um, like the, there was some masculine who were wanting to give like a belated gift, like they missed your something, uh, something for which they would have given you a gift. Maybe your, maybe it was your birthday, 
um, or like a graduation or some other sort of accomplishment or something, they missed it and they wanted to, you know, do that now. And that can be coming through again. He's saying like, you know, asking that you accept it, um, you know, his belated offerings. I think that is what it is. That's what I'm getting right now. Um, and what is the masculine willing to do or surrender toward the union this week? Maybe to cease to allow himself to be a puppet? Because this, this was upside down again. So it was the control, the same way it showed up when I was shuffling, it was the control in reverse. Cease to allow himself to be a puppet. He's like gonna cut these strings, right? The cords, he's gonna cut them this week. He just has to work through some stuff and you see how it's crossing uh, the control. And what would the union have the two of us to do or surrender this week toward the union? Soulmate. Now, soulmate up against twin flame, I think is, yes, working through some of these karmic, especially crossing this yet again, crossing, um, working through some of these karmic situations, cutting the strings, cutting the cords, and um, being done with them so that we can, you know, achieve the overall destiny and outcome, which is this, that sacred relationship, which is um, also, <laughs> This came up in the other reading and it's back. I'm starting with it this time. Um, I did not see soul flame in the previous reading, but it's here now. So all of this is supporting sort of the same message. Um, it's slightly different cards in some cases in some of the placements, but the same message that he's just got to work through something and he, but this is what's on his mind. Again, like the home is where the heart is type of thing. All right, so let me go to the next spread. Look at this, though. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I had been in the mood to use traditional tarot cards, and I have love-themed traditional tarot cards. These are my Lover's Path tarot cards, beginning with strength, representing the sign of Leo. All that that we heard about when I, at the beginning Mercury going into Leo, Mars into Leo, the sun in Leo. So that's probably why this is showing up, um, representing Leo or other fire signs, Aries, Sagittarius. And to show us that, you know, we do have support of the universe. We do have uh, inner strength from which to draw when we need it. And opening to the Queen of Cups in reverse. She was actually upright um, in the feminine subconscious in the other reading. Strength. The five of coins, this indicates a feeling of lack. This is trust issues too. And this could be taking me back to the previous reading too with regard to the feminine. We had Tristan here in reverse. Tristan is the Knight of Cups. Um, here we had, I don't remember what we had surrounding the feminine either. But I think it may have also been in reverse. It was definitely also in reverse because the only thing that was upright was in her subconscious. It was the Queen of Cups. So together, these cards plus the overall energy that was also in reverse um, and indicative of disappointment and things, the Queen of Pentacles, it was showing that the, the feminine wasn't happy like with herself. She didn't feel beautiful like inside or out. She just, and she, oh, the Nine of Wands was in surrounding her in reverse. Like she just felt defeated like all the way around. And that's coming through again with this. So maybe the universe saying, no, no, like here is the strength um, that you need. Like never forget that you have it. Strength. And the Ace of Coins. This can be a Capricorn, Virgo, or um, Taurus in your life. And, and it's definitely a new um, divine blessed beginning. Five of arrows in reverse. Ace of coins in the cut. And it's the 10 of arrows also in reverse. So end of difficulties, possibly involving air signs, but not necessarily. Uh, end of betrayal and backstabbing and hurt and um, just not ways that we should treat people that we care about. 
overall energy this time as opposed to the queen of coins in reverse is the seven of coins in reverse, which can also indicate, maybe not necessarily disappointment, um, but insecurity. So I was just saying that the feminine had been feeling insecurity and low self-esteem and you know just a feeling of being defeated. It can indicate that. It can indicate um, that we're worried that like the reward, the payment for all the work that we've done, all the effort we've put into, whatever we're putting it into. So in this case, love, um, the, our relationships and things, it's not gonna be worth it. Like worrying, is it gonna be worth it? And just general impatience when the seven of coins is in reverse like this. that over sorry it's the prince of arrows cupid in reverse i don't like cupid in reverse um so obviously this is the knight of swords he's in reverse grace which is the star in this deck major arcana card the star with dante and beatrice upright The seven of arrows in reverse. The five of arrows in reverse for the feminine. The chariot in reverse, opposite mirroring the masculine the major arcana, the star. In our subconscious, the Ten of Staves, upright. Crowning, the Queen of Cups has returned in reverse. Fortune, however, had been in this position in reverse. It is now upright at the root. At the heart of the matter, Prior to that, it was Abelard and Contemplation, the Hermit in reverse. It is now the Hermit upright. This is hilarious. This whole row here, Major Arcana, too, by the way, um, surrounded by a bunch of court cards. Um, and this other Major Arcana here, Fortune upright. All right, I'm a little bit like concerned with the masculine, to be honest with you. I mean, but for the fact that he is surrounded by the star. Um, Aquarius, by the way, or other air sign energy, Gemini, Libra. But the Prince of Arrows in reverse has to do with um, like not feeling like not being able to speak up for yourself. Um, and what's the word? Like when you can't find the words. Inarticulate. Um, inarticulate afraid to stick up for himself, afraid to like, just, this is sort of defeated too, like I was saying about the feminine. Having something to say and, and not like having perhaps the balls to say it or being able to find the words to say it. And similarly, in his subconscious, the seven of arrows in reverse is It's like being defeated and not being able to, to stand up for yourself. Also, um, like being in denial, denying your need for protection and support. So here's the need for that. And the seven of arrows is like a denial. Like, no, I'm fine. I'm good. And then you're not really. Um, can also be about being like feeling like guilty because the seven of arrows or seven of swords is often about like thievery and stealing and issues of trust matters of trust and so this can be um, in reverse indicate someone is feeling guilty and 
similarly, the five of arrows in reverse um, is like a feeling of defeat and, you know, like giving up because you just don't know what to do. You're indecisive, basically. Um, so it's like throwing in the towel. Now these are, I'm sure I'm going to be able to read these other ways too, and then probably when I lay the um, romance oracle cards atop them, because I'm already feeling when these can also be other things. This can be like the end of conflict as well, here in reverse. This can be like um, trying to get over your trust issues here in reverse too, as it relates to love. regardless of what other people thought or the circumstance. That you couldn't love yourself first. Anybody that made you feel like you couldn't love yourself first, that's with whom you need to heal the relationship. And there's two ways to ask me. 
you can either repair it or walk away. Whomever it is, you can walk away. Sometimes even from our own family, we must do this. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. But, you know, more importantly than that, it makes you more you, more whole, more healthy. And our overall energy is passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Okay, here atop the Prince of Arrows in reverse in the mask and not being able to speak up for himself. How does that fit? Wow, right? How awesome is that um, That connection? Someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship. This is because he can't find the words to say to whomever he needs to say it, um, what his true feelings are. That, you know, he can't find the strength um, and the capacity to pull an arrow on. Surrounded by here atop the star, okay, your wishes being granted, your prayers being answered, you haven't blown your chance, you know, you can still get with your um, your divine partner, and you will, stay optimistic about your love life, positive thinking and faith will bring you romance, negativity, you know, will bring you delay, Um, but even that would be used some sort of way, for some sort of lesson, so in the end, it all works out, here in the subconscious, atop the seven of arrows in reverse, which can be about a distrust and, you know, um, a lack of self-confidence and all this kind of stuff. It's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. I said being afraid to acknowledge the real need for support and, and for help. You know, just feeling overwhelmed too, the masculine. It makes me kind of sad, um, but it's safe. Feminine not here to hurt. Here, atop the five of arrows, where the feminine was feeling defeated, is playfulness. Apparently, she can get her whole life just by turning, you know, her frown upside down and making it a smile. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Atop desire, the chariot in reverse, where we're going nowhere fast, we're not moving, there's no movement on the situation. It's because we have to learn the lesson um, and forgive ourselves for, you know, whatever it is we're holding to resent them and forget if whoever else was involved and be a, then we can move on. That's when the chariot would turn right side up and turn into a part of movement. Uh, right now we're not moving because we haven't done this. As you release and heal the past, this is what we have to do for them, you experience more love in your present moment. Here atop the ten of staves, getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So maybe we're burdened just by this again we can't wait, we're impatient, we feel defeated, and we're burdened by just by our own thoughts and feelings. Um, but that will all change when we open up to one another. Crowning, atop the Queen of Cups in reverse, finances and career, interesting. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. This could be why she's emotionally out of sorts if she's not able to maybe to bring movement into her life. She's not able to leave the situation or she feels that she's not able to and she's feeling trapped 
um, you know, in old stagnant energy, and that's why she's lying to herself in the case of the Divine Feminine, and that's why she's been hesitant to take the lesson and forgive and move on. She can't move. She can't afford to move, basically, is what this is saying here, um, with finances and career on top of the Queen of Cups in reverse. At the root here, top fortune, however, where our finances and things are about to turn around into our favor, we, we may not know that yet, we may not realize that yet. But top of that, oh, also children. Your love life is being affected by children. So somebody who maybe had been trying and it had not been working, some of you guys who are watching this reading, um, trying to get pregnant and have been work fortune on your side this week. It's a good time, and also you'll have the money to be able to support them in um, starting a family, too. It's safe for you to love, remain positive and optimistic, and go ahead and move forward. At the heart of the matter here, atop the hermit. Boom! Soulmate! Yes! This is your soulmate, and what better heart of the matter uh, than this? So, <laughs> just to recap and piss off the dark, so many at the heart of the matter on this reading, on this spread, and the other spread, overall energy of union, outcome of twin flame, they cannot stop us. They can try to drown me out so you don't get the message. I don't know why, because they should know by now that I'm coming back. Um, but, you know, they can try as they may all kinds of different things. They can't stop us. It is destiny, as the other spread said. love reading, I tried to pick up the cards and Isis fell out the, in, in this deck, the Lover's Path Tarot. So it was this deck, it was actually Major Arcana card Love, which is about, with her and Osiris pictured, and that card being about, um, so it's a little bit different than the Lovers, that card being about like love, love so phenomenal. Um, and earlier when I did the original love reading for this, in this deck, the Keepers of the Light Oracle, she fell out like this again, and I pointed out how she, you know, just keeps inserting herself, like where she wants to be, she's going to come through, period. I can't believe it's happened again. She's like, well, y'all missed this because you couldn't watch the other reading because of the noise? I'm back. Don't worry about it. Isis magic manifesting. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. What she's saying is your thoughts become your reality. So not only remain focused on positive things, um, but watch your thoughts in the beginning before they even reach you, you know, when they enter in your head, is this a positive thought? And then remain focused on, you know, once you decide that's what you want. That's how you manifest positivity into your life. Who fell out with her? Paul the Venetian, experiencing grace. Share your gifts with grace. Waves of inspiration and love are coming to you. So this is the love reading. Your gifts are with your love. And that takes me back to the first spread with the feminine who had gifts here and the masculine wanting her to share her gift this week. Another meaning there. Um, Freya, phases and cycles. There is a beginning with every ending. Illusions are revealed and released. So this is something coming to light this week for us too in the areas of love. And holy amethyst, divine alchemy. Move beyond current challenges. Okay, all this stuff where we're feeling like this. It's like put on your big girl panties, put on your big girl you know, shorts. Um, I'm sorry, big boy <laughs> uh, shorts. And uh, let's get back in the game. Focus on what we desire. Desire. We desire movement. Let's focus on that. Positive movement toward the soulmate. Let's focus on that this week. Okay, with that, <laughs> I was otherwise about to begin with Radha, Soul Flame. Rediscover a lost part of yourself. Experience relationship harmony and healing. Open it to White Eagle, Ancestor Spirit. Connect to your lineage. A family wound or pattern can be healed now. Radha, Soul Flame. And the Shekinah, Sacred Self. Unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance to the sacred rhythm of life. Rod, I'll go one more. And it's Serapis Bay Ascension. 
Radha. Green Tara, supreme protection. So none of us need to feel weak, defeated, um, overwhelmed. We're all supported. You are protected. Cords are being cut. Just move beyond the limitation. Trust. And the overall energy here is heart awakening. Awaken to acceptance and divine love. Give and receive in balance. And lastly, from my Tony Carmine Salerno Universal Love Oracle, we're beginning with Sacred Union and opening to that balance. <laughs> Give and receive in balance is our overall energy with Lady Nada in one deck. And we're starting with balance here, opposite our Sacred Union. So I think that's the same message, balance. And forgiveness that's necessary in order for us to heal and move forward, says Quan Yin. Forgiveness. Meditation. That can help us come into balance too. That can help us to find our words. That can help us to find the ability to forgive. Um, that can help us to figure out how to maybe navigate our finances a little better if we're thinking about wanting to start a family and have a family. Play forgiveness. And the mystic which is another star, more Aquarius energy for me and guides us to pay close attention to our intuition, intuition and messages from spirit, the universe as well. Forgiveness. I'm going to cut. Boom. And you saw it here. You saw me do it. So me. They're so mad. They're so mad. They're going to be even more mad. Overall energy is that mystic. It's back. Okay. From the Tony Carmel Universal Love Oracle to the masculine. Fear. And you know what? In the other reading, they had... It wasn't this fear card, which was, it was from the Keepers of the Light Oracle, but it was Kali Ma facing fear. So that's what they were going to end up doing this week anyway. You still got to do it masculine, um, that homework. Facing your fears, finding your words, using them, speaking your truth, um, and doing what you got to do, regardless of what's been expected uh, of you and, um, you know, demanded maybe and, and controlled like the puppet. You said you were going to cut those strings and st cease to allow yourself to be, you know, guided by a puppeteer or something. You're going to have to face the fear in order to, um, to do that and get beyond it. Feminine to us enchantment this is allowing ourselves healing um through the universe and it looks like we need it too we need to get our you know we're, we're again we're defeated we need our strength we need our confidence we need to you know our self-esteem we got to dust ourselves off look in the mirror remember who we are what we are so we'll need that from the keepers of the light oracle to the masculine Cosmic Gateway, your thoughts are magnetic and powerful. Says Mother was just here saying to watch your thoughts and remain focused on positivity and what you want to manifest. Now he's here talking about the thoughts too. They're magnetic, they're powerful. Miraculous changes are coming because of these thoughts. To us, Paul the Venetian, experiencing grace. Share your gifts with grace. So definitely that box from the first spread, um, for the feminine with the masculine wanted the feminine to experience her gifts and share her gifts with grace. Certainly. Um, this is the second time we're seeing this waves of inspiration and love are coming to you from the keepers. I'm sorry, from the uh, lover's path tarot awakening. This is the sun. Remember Cupid was upside down and he was unhappy. He's right here, right? Is this him upside down and unhappy? Maybe because he's without psyche in this one, in this card. 
That's what's got him all out of sorts. But here he's with his woman, Psyche. He's another one. Okay, he wasn't a priest like Abelard, but what he was was uh, Venus's son. And Venus wasn't feeling Psyche, especially after she had actually um, hurt Cupid by accident, you know, physically, physically harmed him. Uh, but he, he was still in love with her. So he forgave her and he had a, his mother had to eventually come around too. Some of us may be dealing with those kind of situations. The mother doesn't like you. The father doesn't like you. The siblings don't like you. You know what? Fuck everybody. We got to stand up for ourselves again. Find our words, masculine. Stop with the deception, um, especially of yourself. Okay. Again, this, your root is deception. And, and again, probably to yourself. And this seven of arrows is being in denial. So it's like you're rooted in it and you're crowned by it. We got to We got to face that fear and get over that. And you can definitely do it with the sun. Sun also represents the signs of Sagittarius, um, Leo, and Aries. So maybe one of those um, people or somebody taking on those attributes this week being particularly impactful upon your life, in addition to the dark male. <laughs> And feminine, wow, also upright. It's the six of staves, so more fire, like the masculine got from this deck, um, and more victory, more positivity. This is, you know, this is a prince making his march past the townspeople after a success. So this is us this week. Fe starting out feeling defeated, feeling weak, feeling like we're not gonna make it, but we do. From the hashtag creepy deck to the masculine, Blonde female. So we had the redhead before, young female. Um, she's still around saying, well, it's a different redhead, but I think it's representing the same thing. Um, this youthful um, and or younger person and or red haired person in particularly impactful upon your life this week, masculine. And what the red hair represents to me, um, I've said it before, but some of you I, I realize may be new and welcome to you new people, by the way. Um, the red hair represents the light, and I've explained why. I won't go into it now, um, but it has to do with the original um, red-haired people who were fair-skinned African, albino Africans, from whom um, today's white people are, um, are uh, descended. The fairest among us um, at that time used to be put to death. You know, so the lighter you were, the redder your hair was, the more unbind. These people were put to death and because of their like divinity, they were even seen by other people as, as being like particularly divine. And that's also why their reputation has been changed. And, you know, now like red hair people are associated with the devil. It's not true. It's all bullshit. I didn't mean to go into that in the love reading, but I wanted to try to make sense of it for a second. Um, so that's how why I feel the way I do about red hair. And many of us um, have red hair naturally. Many of us find, find ourselves dyeing our hair shades of red, you know, or pink and stuff. Um, that's part of the awakening. That's part of the awakening uh, is from where the red hair comes. Okay. Hashtag creepy deck to the feminine. Ooh, fair male. Now, this is that temptation energy for, for me. Um, for some of us, this is our actual masculine. He's not a dark male. He is a fair male. Um, so that's okay. But be... be mindful of the fact that this also comes through, although he's red haired too, kind of, um, this card also comes through for me as like a temptation, like, um, you know, devilish, devilish, <laughs> Capricorn, uh, Saturnish. Okay. And from the romance angels to the masculine, pay attention to the red flags. I think that's all this red hair that's around. And of course, the positive red fire cards that we got, the sun, the six of wands, those, those are the red flags you're going to be paying attention to. Allow those to be your, like your beacon, your guide, your support, you know, for, to keep the positivity in mind, not let yourself drift back into anything negative, And that may help you to formulate your words and feminine for us, make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. I hope that you guys enjoy our love reading this week. Namaste, angels.